Hello. Hey, Matthias. Hi, Doug. Hello, and hey, John. Good morning. Hey. Hong, is that how you pronounce it? Are you there? Hey, yeah, this is Hongqi. Oh, hello. So yeah, which, just, uh, what, myself. Yeah, which company are you with, if, if you want uh, to be associated with the company? Uh, I'm with Alibaba Cloud. Ah, OK. Got it. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hey, Remy. How's it going? Uh, tired. I'm COVID-19 in my daughter teacher's school. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody's tired these days. <laughs> uh, hey, Tommy. Yo. Yo. <laughs> and Daniel. Hello. Hello. Is, is this your first time in? I don't remember for sure. Um, I've sat in on uh, uh, the SDK part of the meeting uh, before, but. Um, okay. That's fine. What, what company are you with? Just in, if you want to be associated with the company. Uh, sure. I'm, I'm with Google. Oh, okay. I can spell that. Thank you. <laughs> All Morning. Right. Morning. Hey, Colin. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have here? Ray, are you there? Yes, I am. Hello. Hello. And Miss Ginger. Howdy. Howdy. Do, 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 do. Hello, Eric. Good morning. Hey, Lance, how's it going? Good, how are you, Doug? Pretty good. I don't know if you noticed it, Lance, um, but uh, Slinky opened up a PR for the rules for approving new maintainers for the SDK stuff. Um, we're not going to prove that today, but just want to make sure you saw it. That way you could take a look at it. Yeah, I did see it. And I started to look at it before this meeting, but um, thought I should really not try to rush through it. And just yep. Look. Okay, cool. And Klaus, hello. Hello. I just give another couple of minutes. I don't think we have a very long call today. Although... We don't have anything on the SDK agenda. So if anybody has anything, please go ahead and add it. Otherwise, we're probably gonna just, just skip that call today. Hello, Brian. Hello, Doug. Good morning. morning. Well, not quite, I guess, but close. Yeah, almost. Hey, Mark, how's it going? It's an awesome day again. 
I don't have you know, to reach an office. I was oh. going to say, it, you know, it sounds like ever since you moved to the new house, you've been chippier. You know, being being able to um, not have to commute, wonderful thing. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. All right. Just a couple more seconds. Let's start at three after. Oops. All right, let's go ahead and get started. It's three after. Oh, we got one more person. Hold on. Hi, Hamid. Are you there? Hello. Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Welcome. Thank All right. You. Yep. Let's get started here. Um, bit of community time. Okay. Anything from the community that people would like to bring up that's not on the agenda? All right. I'm not hearing anybody. Um, SDK call. We have one scheduled after this week. Uh, I'm sorry, after this call. Uh, nothing on the agenda as of right now. So if you have anything, please add it to the agenda doc. Otherwise, we will be a very short call. Um, one thing we probably should talk about though is we originally scheduled that to happen every week because for a while there we had a whole flurry of activity going on and lots of things to talk about. I think if I remember correctly the last two or three weeks we really haven't had a whole lot to talk about and I'm kind of wondering whether we should switch back to every other week. We don't need to discuss that right here but think about that and um, maybe as the only topic for the SDK call later on. Um, let's see, Timur is not there. Anybody else from the SDK? I'm sorry, from the workflow? I don't see anybody so nothing. I don't think there's anything update there other than I will say that every now and then he pings me um, to tell me some good news about some other company getting involved and wanting to collaborate with them. So it does seem like um, there is more and more attention popping up around the workflow spec. So if you've had any interest in the past, you may want to pop that back on your radar to take a look at it because it does seem like it's getting more traction, which is kind of cool. And okay, so before we jump into the PRs, is there anything on the agenda people need to add that I forgot to add? All right, in that case, let's jump right into it. Bring data def. Jem, welcome, you just joined, so I'll let you talk to this one. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so this was something that I can't remember who raised an issue for because the uh, JSON schema definition was not entirely aligned with the um, specification document. So, um, in the spec, it basically allows the data construct to be any JSON object, whereas the um, our original schema just had objects and strings. So um, all I did was add all the other sort of potential uh, JSON types that could be present. All right, cool. Any questions for Jim? Any concerns? All right. Any objection to approving? Done. Thank you, everybody. Approved. Okay, typo. I think, Remy, this one might be yours, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's mine. Okay, okay let me scroll down to the non-typo things. Just refresh everybody's memory about the big change. Uh, yeah, I think there was just a mistake in the spec uh, on the type of uh, return because obviously it's a map and it was written as an array so i just see that um, that's about okay. it yep more of a syntactical error type of thing so okay any questions or comments a question sorry yeah um, that example is an array isn't it uh it, the it used to be a map Oh, wait. So the opposite. It used to be an array. Yeah. Like basically, it's a map. Because okay. like you have the name. Like it's an invalid syntax. Previously, it was an invalid syntax as an example. So okay. I, All right. Yeah. I think when I wrote that up, I, my, my original intent in my mind was a map. I just for some reason wrote everything as an array. I have no idea why. I think it's just a brain fart. All right. Any other questions or comments? Any objection to approving? All right, done. Thank you, everybody. Next. Let's see who this one is. This is Grant. 
Uh, Grant is not on the call and neither is Christoph. So, okay, if, um, I'll try to summarize this one as best I can. Let's see. So Grant was bothered that the specification talks about two different types of modes, structured and binary. And then he noticed that in the HTTP spec, we then talk about batched. And he was looking at that as another mode. So he was bothered that there seemed to be an inconsistency where we only talk about two valid modes, but then we introduce a third one someplace else. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we thought we really should add some text in here that says, oh, by the way, transports can define other modes. Well, Christoph pointed out that there's that batch isn't really another mode. It's just a different flavor of structured. So what he added um, recently, and I, we helped uh, with the wording yesterday on this, is to make it clear that uh, the, the transports themselves may modify technically either one of these message structures, right? To maybe add some sort of wrapper as necessary for the transport, or in the batch case, it can actually add more than one event into the message itself. And it, so it's a different flavor of sort of, of massaging of the events themselves for a particular transport. So, but either way, you still have the basic structure of, uh, of it's either binary, basically just the raw data, versus it's a structured mode where the cloud event attributes themselves appear inside the message body as opposed to like HTTP headers and stuff like that. Okay, so hopefully this text in here makes it clear that transports can define theirs, which they do today in HTTP. So it's technically not a, a, a changing, a breaking change in the spec or anything. It just adds clarification that this can happen by adding this may right here. Okay, any questions about that? Jim, your hands up. Um, so just a quick question. You know, when these transports add these extra representations to be compliant do i have to implement all of those as a transport provider um that's that's the only so for instance when you we add or uh, you know the request to add batching or streaming mm -hmm. um is it then a requirement that all trans all http transport implementations support those other modes um or do they become optional that that was the only it, it's not really related to this spec but it's related to all these sort of quirky transport things that have been popping up recently? Yeah, it's a good question. And I believe, if that's what I want to double check, I believe that the specification will say when it's required. I just want to see if that's true. Because I'm pretty sure batching is not required. But I just want to see. Um, so I'm trying to see if it actually says whether it must support it. And I guess that also then plays into your discovery stuff because now all these different modes need to be advertised through that discovery mechanism as well. Yeah, so I'm not seeing it jump out at me, but let's can we take that one offline? Because I think that might be a good clarification in general for some specifications someplace. Maybe it's the main spec to make it clear um, that this that it is optional. I mean, the fact that it's, well, then that's made for the specking and the finite, but it's not clear whether you have to support it. So, yeah, you mind if we take that offline and deal it as, as a separate issue? No, absolutely. Do you want me to open it as an issue? Just that would to, be great. In the program? Okay. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. You can open that up and remind us to go back and double check that. Because I, I believe the intention was something like batch is not required, but I have this vague recollection that we do require them to support the, in general, binary and structure, the, you know, the simple version of those. But I, I don't yeah. know for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Doug. Hold on. I'll make a comment here. Okay. Thank you, Doug. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Brian. I missed that. Okay. Either way, he'll get noticed and we'll update it. Um, Daniel, your hands up. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I, I think uh, Grant opened this uh, partly because of my confusion as I was uh, uh, doing some uh, related implementation. Um, uh, so I think I think my confusion uh, was still that uh, there's there's this uh, uh, there's this question of uh, okay so if if we're going to call it uh, uh, 
different forms of, uh, of structured mode, uh, that, that's great. Uh, then can we make that consistent uh, across the, the, so the protocol binding uh, spec still calls it a mode, a, a, a still treats it or, or uh, uh, listed as a separate mode, uh, you know, separate from structured and, and calls it a mode uh, and, and so forth. And so, and so there's still this uh, idea that, and, you know, and even there's a separate section 3.3 .3 batch content or mode uh, that's in parallel with structured and binary. Uh, gotcha. And so if, can, can we be, maybe be a little bit more consistent as to kind of what, what, the, what the, uh, the taxonomy of these things is uh, across the different specs? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, that's, a, that's an excellent point because you're right. If it's not a separate, if it's not a third mode, then we probably should use a different term for it, yes. And I think okay. that might, Clarify some of the questions about, uh, or uh, what, what's required, and you know, by uh, yeah, just because mm -hmm. we're, we're using the same uh, uh, terminology. Okay. Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Can you add a comment to this PR to that effect? That way, Grant knows he has a little more editing to do. Sure. Let me see. What what number is that PR? It is six sixty. 660, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll paste the link to it in the Zoom chat for you. There you go. Hopefully that's a very minor change, uh, but, he should, but uh, we should probably make it as part of the same PR. Okay. Any other questions on this one? I mean, aside from that, hopefully syntactical change, do people agree with the general direction this is going and are, and are okay with it? Okay, not hearing any objections, and then we'll just see if we can get Grant to make those final edits, and then we'll review it again next week. Okay, anything else before we move on? Perfect, all right, thank you everybody. Um, okay, <clears throat> this one, I think this one's mine. Let's see if I remember what I did here. Okay, so this one was mainly cleanup. Um, basically, I decided to move, um, the governance stock, which was all by its, the SDK governance stock, which is in a directory all by itself into our community directory to live with all the other governance related documentation. Uh, for example, our main, doc, our main governance stock is in here now as well. So I put this one in there and just called it SDK governance. Um, similarly, I didn't do any textual changes in here. I just renamed the, the PR and maintainer guidelines because these are actually for the SDKs. So just rename those to put SDK in front of it to make it really clear it's about those. And in the main readme, I just added uh, more information to actually point to these documentation, to these new documents that are in there. Uh, doesn't obviously change any of the specs, just moving things around in the repo more than anything else. Any questions or concerns about those? Any objection to approving? All right, thank you. Oops, approved. Do, 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 do. All right, um, okay, next one is mine as well. So this one I mentioned last week as a, <clears throat> as a warning I might be opening up. So last week I talked about how there really wasn't a good mechanism to make it so that when a client queries the discovery spec uh, a second time to know whether the metadata about a particular service, if it's been changed, is a brand new service or it's replacing an existing service and they just tweak some of the metadata. Uh, because there really wasn't any field in here identified as having to be immutable across these queries. And I was originally thinking, well, maybe we should make the name immutable. But then I, I can't remember who it was, but somebody pointed out that maybe that's not so great either, because what if there's a typo in there, or for whatever reason, they need to change that. But it is still technically the exact same service. So that's when I defaulted after thinking about it and said, okay, let's just introduce an ID that's globally unique, and it's a UUID. And it's basically just uniquely identifies the service. Um, the value must not change. Has to be a UUID per RC 4122. Relatively simple thing conceptually. The only real question I think for the group is, do we want to add this as a field there that's immutable to allow people to do this identification uh, for when things change? Any comments, questions? I think everything else in here is just modifying the samples and stuff like that. 
Oh, I did change this. Um, other places I was using curly braces around variables and I missed one here. So that was it. Klaus, you're, you wanna say something? Yeah, um, <laughs> well, um, <laughs> so the name is also still unique, I think. It's, oh, is it? I think it's the requirement says that it's. Oh yes, I'm sorry, you're right. It must be unique, but not. it doesn't say it has to be immutable. That's the key part to me. Uh, okay, so I'm just wondering, because I'm, I think in Kubernetes we have similar concept that you have a name and a, a UUID for objects and it's, it means a different thing slightly. So even if you recreate something with the same name, it will then have a different UUID. So is that intended to be something similar here or? Uh, my intention by this was, yes, if, if somebody does something like they, ha they first have a service called foo and then they change its name so it's now called bar and then someone else comes along and creates another service called foo, even though it shares the same name as the original service, it is a completely different one because it will have a different UUID. So I think in conceptually, I think it is similar to Kubernetes, but, but I, I, def I definitely did not model it after Kubernetes. Because Kubernetes it's just what, I, what it reminded me of, but yeah. of course you see those concepts uh, all over. Yeah, um, it's just <clears throat> Kubernetes is slightly different, right? Because in Kubernetes you actually can't rename an object. Yeah, that's true. Which is actually really annoying, but that's a different topic. <laughs> <laughs> Why have both, right? Why have a unique ID and a, and a new ID? But you, you can delete it and create it again, and yeah, and it still has the same name, but although it might be something different. Yeah, I know. We're going to rat hole on this, but sure, why not? It, and it drives me nuts because you can actually get into a weird state where things are referenced by other things by, by just names sometimes. And you can get a bad reference to a, a new object that you didn't mean to actually reference. It gets really, really ugly sometimes. But anyway, back to this one. Any other questions, comments by anybody? I have a question. Didn't we talk about this at some point of having it in the spec and then we got removed? I don't remember, to be honest. I mean, it, it might be worthwhile going back and get history and just see whether there had been one. Because we, we, had, we added a whole bunch of these and then we went back to more minimalist. Well, are you talking about the discovery spec or the CE spec? Oh, good point. Yeah, I, I, I was talking more about the, the CE spec, sorry. Yeah, that may be true, I can't remember for sure, but I, I don't recall one in the discovery spec. I'll go back in history. Okay. I and mean, obviously if, if for some reason we decide this is a bad idea, if, if, assuming we prove it today, we can always rip it back out again later. As long as, as, long, as I said, the use case I'm going after is to make sure that if the metadata changes, I wanna know as a server, which metadata I'm allowed to change versus not. And this, as of right now, makes it so that you can change anything except for ID. And then as a client, I wanna be able to know how to, uniquely, how to uniquely identify an object to know whether it's a new thing versus just updated metadata. And if you wanna solve that a different way, I'm okay with that. I just, I just couldn't think of another way to do it. Okay, any other questions, comments? Any objection to approving? or any reason we should hold off and give people more time to think about it. I, I actually would like to think about it a bit more. Okay, that's fine, no hurry. Okay, in that case, are there any, any other discussions? Otherwise we'll move on. Okay, in that case, this one. Now this one was just open today, so we can't approve it, but I just want to draw it to people's attention. Uh, Slinky opened this up. Um, we were missing some documentation in the SDK uh, governance doc about how new maintainers get added. Uh, you know, what kind of voting process there is, how do they get nominated, stuff like that. Uh, so this is his first initial pass at it. Obviously this matters most to the SDK folks. So at least those people, please review it when you get a chance, but obviously anybody in their wider group, if you're interested, go ahead and review it. It seems fairly straightforward. Um, you may want to tweak some of the wording just because English is not his first language. Uh, but aside from that, it seems like it's fairly consistent with what I see in most communities. Anyway, uh, take a look at that when you get a chance. He also added a little section here about how to update this document itself. I think that was missing as well. 
And I think the rules he defined here are consistent with how he updated the, uh, the main governance doc itself. Anyway, any comments on that? Okay, please review that when you get a chance. And I believe, Jem, we're not ready to talk about protobuf yet, are we? No. Yep, I didn't think so, okay. And I believe uh, Francisco still wants to hold off on these two. Um, okay, so I think two weeks ago or so, we talked about possibly um, reviewing where we were relative to the implementations of the discovery spec. Um, I'll, I'll raise my hand first, I've, I have started. Um, that's how I identified some of these issues that have been opening up. I'm not ready to share it or discuss it or do any interop testing with it yet, but I have at least started the process. Um, anybody else want to raise their hand to give an indication as to whether they're starting on that, any feedback they have? Um, on my side, I did uh, an implementation in uh, JavaScript. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I find out about the fake issue. Uh, I didn't work on it in the last seven days, to be honest. Yeah. So I kind of stopped, but I, it was a kind of working version. So um, I, I could probably do a demo, like not today, I really didn't sleep enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Presentation today, uh, but for the next call, uh, I might be able to show something. Okay. Yeah. If we have time, a demo would be really kind of cool to see something in action. I, like 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 you in the last week, I didn't get a chance to actually work on mine. So um, I'm hoping maybe this weekend to be able to work on it, and then yeah, maybe we can, you know, show uh, each of our clients talking to each other's servers or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. All right. Any other? Topics, I mean, any other uh, discussion around the interop or implementation side of things here? Anybody else wanna raise their hand in terms of thinking about working on it? Okay, in that case, we're technically at the end of the agenda. Are there any other topics people would like to bring up? All right, in that case, we'll, find, we'll do final roll call and then we'll jump over to the SDK call, as short as that may be. So. Doug, are you there? Doug, you looking off mute? Okay, what about Lucas? Hello. Hello. And Manuel? Hi. Hello. And Vinay, whoops, spelled you wrong. I'm here. Vinay, you there? Yes. Excellent, good. Okay, and I got you, Doug, thank you. Did I miss anybody else for the roll call? All right, in that case, non-SDK folks, you are free to leave. Thank you for joining. And we'll start the SDK call in just about a minute or so. Thank you, everybody. Oh, fudge. What was the topic I said we should talk about? Oh yeah, meeting times. Oh, we're getting an agenda. Excellent, thank you, folks. Lance, was this yours? The um, the proposal to vote, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Just wanna make sure I put the right name in front of it. Okay, we'll wait till 26 after the hour, then we'll get started. And just for fun, we're waiting. Ryan, Doug, Daniel. Not that it matters. All right, 26, why don't we go ahead and get started. Lance, you're up first. Uh, so um, there was a proposal to rename the SDK from Cloud Events SDK to just pure Cloud Events and um, kind of following some of the guidelines that Slinky did uh, put together for you know uh, voting on other issues within an SDK. I thought this might be a good uh, issue to vote on because it's been, um, you know, there are dis disagreements about it. Uh, so if uh, anyone has an opinion on this, um, I would appreciate an up or down vote. That's it. Uh, I'll raise my hand. Got a question for you. Um, do 
And do other SDKs have a similar concept to like a module where they have the same kind of naming question in front of them? Are you asking me that? Yeah, you or anybody else. I, I was just curious. I'm just wondering whether it's a, whether it's a, a JavaScript specific issue or whether all SDKs are going to run into the same problem. Well, I mean, I, I guess, you know, um, for each one of the SDKs, they all have their own unique names. Um, I think the specific concern here is that, that you know, there have already been a couple of releases um, and, uh, you know, this will just break existing uh, usage. Uh, but, you know, there are, there are ways around that, I suppose, by uh, emitting, you know, deprecation notices and stuff like that when you do an installation of the SDK. Um, yeah. Okay. Probably and, not really an answer to your question. <laughs> no, that's fine. It's, and that's, that, that's okay. So I guess my other question is something that you mentioned. Um, obviously, breaking backwards, break, breaking existing people are using it is, is obviously a question. Is what is the consistent or what is the pattern that you see in the JavaScript community around stuff like this? Do they normally append dash SDK type things to their modules, or do they usually not do that kind of stuff? I, I don't. I don't think that that would be very common, really. I mean, typically a module name should just say what it is. And and in Grant's point is that this isn't really an SDK. Um, you know, I can I can kind of see it both ways. Um, especially if we start to do things like add um, the discovery stuff to it, it sort of creeps a little further along that continuum towards something larger than just a little module. Um, it, I mean, it happened, if I may, it happened also uh, like when uh, NPM just uh, basically released their organization principle, so with the at uh, something. And usually what people were doing is like they moved to organization and then they were doing like a code mod to automatically update uh, your imports and change your code base. So we could maybe provide a code mod to do that. But basically go through all the import and update them automatically. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite follow that. I hate to ask you to repeat yourself, but. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. Like basically, it happened uh, with the organization. So sometimes it happens like uh, React, I think it was like that, or that you have a code mod. I don't know if you ever used that one uh, that allows you to define, uh, like to basically introspect the JavaScript and TypeScript and uh, like modify it through the introspection. So you can automatically update all imports into a source code. So uh, some people provide that, and then in one command line, you just uh, update the whole uh, naming. Right. So I, I'm, I kind of agree with Grant, uh, to give my opinion. Uh, so I, I did the plus one vote on that one. So, so Lance, I noticed that you voted no on it. Is your biggest concern just the, uh, the idea of breaking existing people? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, you know, and I and I recognize that it's not a huge community of users at this point, but there are people using it. So, yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to chime in or vote? Okay. Was there a specific action, Lance, you're looking for here, or was it just to raise it to people's attention so they should vote if they if they have an opinion? The latter. That. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, thank you for bringing it up. Uh, an annoying question, but something that's not, un not, not unexpected. All right, Daniel. Uh, yeah, this came from a, a discussion, in, a brief discussion on the Slack. Um, uh, so it looks like uh, for a bunch of languages, maybe most languages, uh, we're releasing uh, the libraries to our package managers under our, our kind of our personal accounts uh, on, on the package manager. Um, and I wanted to ask uh, about uh, what people think about uh, having potentially uh, kind of a cloud events uh, account that maybe multiple people uh, would have uh, access to for, uh, for the package manager releases. 
uh, so that, you know, for example, someone drops off the maintainer list and now we can't release the package because it's under their personal account and, you know, things like that. Uh, this is, uh, this is a practice that we've been doing, uh, for most of, uh, like Google's, uh, uh, library releases where we have group, uh, accounts that, that belong to a team, uh, and, and so anyone within that team can, can release libraries. Um, uh, I, this, this came up uh, for me because I'm, I was doing the first releases of a Ruby SDK and trying to figure out, okay, well, how should I do that? Should I, should I do, use my personal account in, in Ruby Gems or Ruby Package Manager? Is there a, a kind of a common practice for group accounts? You know, uh, what, so I guess I wanted to see what people uh, thought about. Is, is this an issue that uh, people are concerned about? Uh, is it language specific? Uh, what, what's, what, what, are, what are the thoughts? Yeah, so my hands up, I'll go first. I, I, I think it's a good idea. I honestly don't know how as the SDKs are handling this right now. I think most of them are probably using their personal account for things. At least that's been my experience from what I've, when I've interacted with folks. It seemed like they were using their personal accounts for like, I don't want to say Travis CI, but that's one thing I think of. That kind of stuff, even though I don't think it actually is Travis CI, right? And that's not good. And so my, my real question for you, though, is in your experience when you've done this, is it just a matter of the maintainers just through back channels share the password and user ID or whatever for these systems, or is there something a little more formal and in, in, where this information is stored? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, when obviously when we do it in, at Google, we have mechanisms uh, within Google to to share secrets like passwords uh, within mm -hmm. uh, within groups uh, for. For a group like this, I'm not sure what the best uh, uh, approach for that is. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm definitely open to suggestions. I mean, we could just back channel passwords, uh, but maybe there should, I, I, I'm actually not sure what, what tools might be available to do that effectively. Okay. So let me pick on Lance for a sec, because Lance, I, I know nothing about JavaScript or NPM, but I'm assuming in order to upload stuff to forgive me using the wrong term, probably NPM repository or whatever it's called, it has to be an ID and password protected, right? So who owns that today? Uh, so it was, um, Fabio had it, um, and then just added me as someone with the rights to upload to it. So, uh -huh. you know, it's not a single person that can push the NPM package, but it's a select group of people that are determined by, you know, I guess the maintainers. Right, okay, so a slightly different scenario. Does anybody know if there is an SDK out there that has the similar situation where it has to be a single password or identity? Uh, just to clarify, for, for Ruby at least, it doesn't have to be a single identity. Uh, you, you can have multiple owners. Uh, so that, I guess that is another uh, potential uh, uh, approach for package managers that support it just to have several people uh, all like all the maintainers uh, 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 own the own the package on their personal accounts um, uh, I'm I'm just thinking about the group idea as a formalization of that but if that's not feasible then uh, uh, maybe just having multiple owners would be uh, also a, a, a way to a way forward it was your concern pretty much just about the Ruby SDK um, it's, it was, uh, yeah, it's, it's a Ruby SDK because I wasn't sure what our, uh, what our practice is, uh, cause I wanted to release and, you know, right. how, sh how should I do that? Um, and so it's kind of a question for the group, you know, how, how are we doing this as, uh, you know, as all languages uh, for cloud events? Uh, is there a, is there a common practice? Or are we just kind of all doing our own thing? Um, should there be a common practice, um, you know? Anybody want to voice an opinion? So, so I put the thing in chat. We should ensure the Cloud Events project owns the repo namespaces that we publish into. So in other, in other words, it shouldn't be an individual, although we can delegate access to it. Lance, your hands up. Yeah, um, <clears throat> in general, I like the idea of having something that's common and owned by, you know, an organization as opposed to individuals. I guess it, like, where do you stop? We've got Travis CI, Circle CI, Codassi, 
coveralls, um, you know, lots and lots of tooling that requires, you know, access to, <clears throat> from, but like somebody has to own that and manage that. So where do you stop the common thing? Is it just when you publish to like a repository or something like that? Or is it all the little bits and pieces that uh, go into actually having a, you know, CI? Well, it, it seems to me that if anybody on the, if anybody on these teams who sort of manages one aspect of the tooling uh, decides to walk away for whatever reason, we don't want to be in a lurch, right? And so, I, I mean, I agree with what Mark is saying. I just, I'm just trying to figure out the, the, the mechanics of it, right? Because I, unlike what Daniel was saying, where they have a, a central place inside Google where they can do things like share passwords and stuff, we don't have that. So I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how we actually get to where I think we want to be <laughs> without, a, without a shared data store. Is a private re repository not? A oh, there you go. <laughs> sure, take the easy answer, Lance. Jeez. <laughs> what do people think about that? Setting up a private repo that only certain people have access to and we just stick passwords and information like that in there. I mean, I, I guess that that is one way to go. I, I, is that secure enough for people? I mean, I know you're not technically supposed to check stuff into GitHub, but as long as it's a private repo, is that okay? I mean, I guess you can also use just GitHub secrets too, couldn't you? I've never done that. Um, I don't know if, hmm. How does that work? My understanding of GitHub secrets is that uh, they're basically write only. Um, you, yeah. you, can you won't be able to read them if they're. Right, right. Uh, interesting. I don't know. Do you guys want to go off and think about this or, or what? I'm not, it's really up to you guys to decide. Because we, we, I feel like we've just been kind of winging it up till now and it's, and it's worked sort of, um, but it's probably not the best approach long-term. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll say that um, I was actually really concerned when I started to get uh, more heavily involved in the JavaScript SDK and, and, Fabio was not around much and I didn't know how I would be able to get access to things like the code coverage reports and stuff like that. And fortunately, uh, we managed to connect on that and he added my, you know, added me as someone who could do that, but <clears throat> it didn't seem like there was any clear, uh, you know, common way to handle this sort of stuff. And, it, and that was disconcerting when I first started working on it. Yeah, and I'm thinking. I, <clears throat> I'm trying to. I'm wondering whether the CNCF has anything in this space to, to help us, any kind of tooling or something. Like I can't think of anything offhand, but I guess, I could reach out to Chris Anacek or Amy and see if, uh, if they have something that we're just not aware of. Um, and then you know revisit this next week, yeah, and see if they have any recommendations. I don't know. Anybody else have any ad other ideas? Man, you guys are too quiet. <laughs> so what do you want to do? Someone needs to speak. I'm not, I'm not a maintainer at SDKs. I have no stake in this. Um, I, I think that's, uh, yeah, if you can find out if there are any tools available, uh, that'd be great. If, if not, if it turns out that, uh, that there isn't, a, then, Maybe someone. I'm. I'm. I'm happy to do it. Could just kind of uh, think about it a little bit. Write up. A, write up a proposal uh, for something maybe simple and straightforward to start off with, and we can vote on it or something. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I'll take the AI to reach out to Chris and or Amy and see. Okay. Anything else on that particular topic? Then I guess in the meantime you'll just. 
um, add other for people now, as, as just, necessary, right? For now, I'm just publishing using my personal account, so. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, Lance, is that hand new or old? Oh, sorry, yeah, that's old. Okay, I wasn't sure, okay. <clears throat> okay, anything else on this topic then? Okay, um, my topic, do you guys still wanna meet on a weekly basis? Or should we switch back to every other week? I mean, obviously we could still keep weekly and just cancel um, if there's nothing on the agenda, but it's up to you guys. I'm personally, I'm fine going every other week because it does seem like there hasn't been a whole lot of material in the last little bit. Okay, anybody else wanna voice an opinion? Okay, so I'll tell you what, I'll, let me paste um, that, let, let me paste the topic and the proposal to go back to every other week in the SDK Slack channel. And if I don't hear any objections, we'll, we'll do, I guess, lazy consensus is the phrase. Um, otherwise, if someone objects, then we'll find out why, because obviously they're not on the call, so they probably won't object. <laughs> so, okay, I'll do that. Uh, okay, any other topics people want to bring up? All right, in that case, we are done. Thank you, everybody. And we'll talk again next week on the main call. Okay, bye. Thanks, bye. Bye, bye. thanks.